Welcome to another Tech Tip video where today I'm going to look at some of the advantages of working with multi-body part design inside of SolidWorks. Multi-body part design is great for accomplishing some fairly unique or challenging tasks inside of SolidWorks such as this crankshaft. This crankshaft for instance has five main bearings along the center line. They're identical though there's a gap in between each one of them. Likewise, you'll also notice that there's a journal bearing and two counterweights located in four different places, though their orientation has been rotated 90 degrees in each instance. I'm going to show how we can use multi-body part design to accomplish this. So let's start by creating a new part and start by generating the main bearing. To do this, I'm simply going to just draw a circle and choose to extrude this 30 millimeters. We'll also go ahead and set the material just so we can get a better look at what we want to see. Now the first tip that I'm going to show is something that's actually hidden from most users. It's called temporary axes and they're available for every single cylindrical feature or body in your design. Enabling this will show an axis or center line along any cylindrical body that you've created. This is going to come in handy as we go through the rest of this design. And you can toggle this on and off at any time from the pull down, or in my case, you'll notice I've set a hotkey, Shift A, to turn them on and off. So the next thing we need is we want five instances of this bearing located spaced out from one another. So I'm going to choose linear pattern, and for the direction, I'm going to choose that temporary axis that I just enabled. I know that I want my spacing to be 75 millimeters and I want five instances. The next thing we need to do is choose the features to pattern. And you'll notice that we get a nice preview showing exactly what we're looking for, but when I press OK, nothing happens. Well, something has happened. The feature has been created with a warning. The problem is SolidWorks wasn't able to join those features together because of the gap between them. This is the first place where we'll see multi-body come into play. Let's go ahead and edit this feature. Most features in SolidWorks give you the ability to choose features or faces to pattern, but they also have a third option that's collapsed by default called bodies to pattern. In this case, instead of choosing the cylindrical feature, I'm going to choose this entire solid body. It might seem like the same thing, but there's more to it which we'll see in a moment. When I press OK, SolidWorks creates the feature just as we expected. We now have five disjointed cylindrical bodies. But SolidWorks has done something else. It's added a new folder to the Feature Manager tree that lists each one of these solid bodies. This might not seem important now, but you'll notice I'll be referencing this folder throughout the rest of this tutorial. The next thing we need to do is create the journal bearing that falls in between two main bearings. To do this, I'm going to start by generating a construction plane that's centered between these two faces. I'll go ahead and choose to create a sketch on this and look straight at it. What I want in this case is my journal bearing to be 40 millimeters and be 40 millimeters off from the center. I also need to ensure that the centers are horizontal to each other. Now when I rotate the view you'll notice what I have. I actually have a sketch that's floating out in space between these two surfaces. And when I go ahead and choose to extrude this, I'm going to select the mid-plane extrusion and set the width, but you'll notice that it doesn't connect to any geometry. When I press OK, SolidWorks now adds an additional or six solid body to that folder we just saw a moment ago. So I'm going to go ahead and create the counterweight system uh, between that connects the uh, journal to the main bearing and I'm going to fast forward this as this doesn't really have anything relevant to do with this exercise. So we've generated this sketch and the last thing I need to do is go ahead and choose to extrude this. I'm going to go ahead and choose extrusion and I'm going to select the contours from this sketch that I want to use. I want to choose the circles in any of the open spaces in this design. For the direction or the end condition, I'm going to choose up to surface to have it terminate at the main bearing. 
Now at this point, we'll notice, we'll look at something that you might not have noticed before if you've never used multi-body part design, and that's an option called Merge Results. If we look back at our Feature Manager tree, you'll notice that currently there are six solid bodies in our design. With Merge Results checked, and I, when I press OK, what SolidWorks does is it actually merges that feature with any other bodies it touches. So in this case, what we've done is we've joined this journal, this main bearing, and our counterweight. That's actually not what we wanted to do in this case because I want to show some other advantages to multi-body design. At any time, you can go back to a feature, choose to edit it, and disable the merge results option. Now, when I look at the solid bodies folder, we can see that it's created this as a separate solid body or as the seventh solid body in our solid bodies folder. This will play a more important role as we continue on. I'm going to go ahead and I want to, I want to copy this counterweight over to the other side. And to do this, I'm going to go ahead and use a mirror feature. I'm going to select the plane that I set as the center between the two main bearings. And like we did with the pattern, we're going to enable bodies to mirror instead of features. And in this case, I'm going to select the counterweight body. You'll notice the merge results option here as well, which we're going to leave disabled and press OK. SolidWorks now has added an eighth solid body. Now this is where things get interesting. I want to create a fillet between this journal and both of uh, these counterweights. So I'll choose to add the fillet feature. And when I grab this edge, you'll notice that the fillet isn't actually being created between the two bodies. Well, that's because these two are actually separate solid bodies. It added the fillet just on the edges of that part. That's not what we wanted. I'm going to go ahead and delete that fillet, and I'll show these two bodies again. You'll notice I can do this by accessing the bodies from the solid bodies folder. That's one of the first advantages we'll, we'll see. What we can do at any time, if we're ready to actually combine geometry together, we can go into the solid bodies folder and select them and right mouse click and choose to combine them. This gives us the ability to do one of three Boolean operations, adding geometry together, subtracting geometry, or finding the common geometry amongst them. Add is probably the most common tool you'll use when doing multi-body part design. When we do this, we can see that the number of solid bodies has been reduced to six, and in fact, both counterweights and the journal bearing have been combined. Now, when I go ahead and I decide to add that fillet in that space, SolidWorks actually creates the fillet just as I expected it would. Now, here's where the real advantages of doing multi-body part design start to come to life. I'm going to go ahead and choose to create, I want to pattern this counterweight and journal to each one of these locations. We're going to use linear pattern and again we're going to choose the temporary axes and again I'm going to choose bodies to pattern and this time you'll notice I select every, all the geometry that makes up that individual solid body. So when I press OK I've duplicated that work in five different locations. The reality is, is I actually wanted four there so let's go ahead and just simply change that by clicking on this and choosing edit feature and we'll just reduce the number. Now if you remember the original design and we can toggle back there were four instances but they rot rotated 90 degrees from each other. So this is where we're going to look at some of the really powerful things we can do with multi-body. There's a command called move copy bodies that I've added to my command manager under features. If this button isn't available, you can always access it from command search in the upper right hand corner by simply typing move and selecting it from the drop down. Move copy bodies allows you to act on a solid body as though it was its own entity, almost like a part inside of an assembly. In this case, you saw that I was able to move it out into space, and that's because it wasn't joined to anything. But that's not what we wanted to do. Let me edit that feature and show some of the other things we can do. In this case, I actually want to choose to rotate that solid body. For the axis of rotation, we're going to select that same temporary axis, and we're going to go ahead and set an angle of 90 degrees. Now when I press OK, SolidWorks takes that entire solid body and rotates it. 
We're going to repeat this process for the other two instances along the back, but we're going to change the angle in each one of these cases. So the next one is going to be 180 degrees, and the last one in this case is going to be 270 or minus 90. So you can see now that we've actually created all of those instances along there. We've created several solid bodies. This is actually a disjointed part. We have a solid body for each one of the main bearings, and we have a solid body for each one of the journal and counterweight systems. At this point, we'd like to join everything together. Like before, we can select any number of solid bodies from the solid bodies folder, right mouse click and choose combine and simply choose to add them all together. Now this is where things get interesting. As soon as I press OK the solid bodies folder disappears. That's because there aren't multiple solid bodies to do anything unique to. Everything you could do to a solid body you can do to the part at this point. But if we roll back before the combine the solid bodies folder returns. Just keep that in mind if you're ever trying to find out where they went. It probably means you have a single solid body in your file. Now I'm going to shut a few things off in this case. I want to disable the visibility of that plane in the temporary axes to see what we have. If you remember from the original design, there were a few other things that were done to that counterweight system. There were fillets that were added in between uh, this angle. There was a fillet on the top, and there's also an angular cut that's taken place. This is where some of the value of multi-body and parametrics work together. What I'm going to go ahead and do is instead of adding a fillet to each one of these intersections, we can go back before we ever perform the mirror operation and we can add some of these features now. To do this, I'm going to go ahead and start by adding those fillets. Here we're going to add the 20 millimeter fillets in these locations. And I'm going to also add the 5 millimeter fillets to the outside edges. Likewise, we're also going to go ahead and add that cut. To do this, I'm going to use a, a revolve cut. So I'm going to start by drawing a center line down the middle. And we're simply going to draw a, a triangle that I'm going to use to cut this feature with. Now, I might have made a mistake there, so I'm going to go ahead and go back. You'll notice I accidentally clicked on something, so I'm going to delete that feature and change this here. And I'll just add a dimension of 40 millimeters. Now, I'm going to go ahead and close this sketch and choose to do a revolve cut. When I do the revolve cut, you'll notice there's an option here on which bodies I want to perform this cut on. Here you have further control. I could choose to perform the cut just on the bearing, this bearing, or the counterweight in this case. This ensures that I make sure that features that I'm creating only affect the solid bodies I want them to. Now here's where the real power of everything we've done comes to light. When I scroll down or roll down the rollback bar, you can see that both of those features have been added to the mirrored solid body. Likewise, when we get to the pattern copies, we can see that those features have been reproduced and likewise the move copy bodies all work properly. So as you can see, solid bodies have a lot of powerful capabilities that you can use inside of SolidWorks. So take a look and see how you might be able to use them in your designs.